Hello everybody, this video is on introduction to waves. So that's not the definition. What exactly is a wave? In physics, a wave is defined as a form of energy transferred from one location to another through generating a disturbance. Most commonly, when a person hears the word wave, they might think about a wave in the ocean or on the water surface. But in physics, examples of waves extend beyond simply water waves. And we'll delve into different examples and types of waves in this video. Waves can be divided into two types, mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. We'll discuss each type of wave individually. Mechanical waves are ones that require medium to propagate in. This means when energy is transferred from one location to another through a mechanical wave, the disturbance that's caused by this mechanical wave requires a medium such as a solid, liquid or gas. And this disturbance is represented by oscillation of particles within that medium. So for example, when a mechanical wave is transmitted through air, it's the oscillation of its air particles that allows the mechanical wave to transfer its energy from one location to another. There are numerous examples of mechanical waves, including sound and waves in water, as we previously mentioned. Mechanical waves can be further subcategorized into transverse mechanical waves and longitudinal mechanical waves. Transverse mechanical waves is further defined as one where its direction of oscillation is perpendicular to the direction of its propagation. In simple words, when you focus on the direction of oscillation of a particle within the medium through which the mechanical is propagating, it will propagate in a direction that is perpendicular to the direction of travel of the wave. For example, with this water wave, the red moving dot tracks the oscillation direction of this wave. And as you can see, it's moving up and down. That vertical axis is my direction of oscillation. Now visually, you can see by this animation that the wave itself is moving towards the right. And this is known as my direction of propagation. So you can see my direction of oscillation forms a 90 degree angle to my direction of propagation. This is why this is classified as a transverse mechanical wave. It's transverse because of the perpendicular relationship of the propagation oscillation. It's a mechanical wave because it requires water as a medium for the wave to travel through. Besides water waves, a ripple is also a form of transit mechanical wave that you can observe in real life. On the flip side, a longitudinal mechanical wave is when the direction of oscillation is parallel to the direction of propagation. The best example of a longitudinal mechanical wave is sound wave as it transmits through different mediums such as air, water or a solid. This animation represents the propagation of a sound wave through a particular medium. Each of the black moving dots is a particle within this medium and as you can see, if you focus on the red dots, which is one of these many black dots, the red dots is moving left, right, left, right which represents its direction of oscillation. So the particles within the sound wave is oscillating left and right. If you focus on the entire wave and look at all the oscillation of particles all together, you can see that the wave itself is moving towards the right. And this is my direction of propagation for the sound wave. And this is why it's classified as a longitudinal wave because the direction of oscillation is parallel in the same orientation as its propagation direction. Now it is very important to understand the differences between transverse and longitudinal waves. The best way to understand the difference between longitudinal and transverse waves is to visualize them. In longitudinal waves, the direction of oscillation is parallel to the direction of the wave's propagation. And if you contrast this to transverse wave, you can see each particle within this wave if you just focus on the individual directions, they are oscillating up and down. But the wave itself is propagating towards the right. While both these waves require medium to travel in, which is why they are called mechanical waves, 
the relationship between the direction of oscillation and the direction of propagation differentiates between the two types. You can also use a slinky to better understand the differences between transverse and longitudinal waves. In the top diagram, the person swings the slinky up and down, and as you can see, this oscillation causes the wave to travel towards the right. This represents a transverse wave as the particle's motion, which is the slinky, is perpendicular to the motion of the wave. Using the same slinky, if the person oscillates the slinky backwards and forward in the same direction as the energy transport or the propagation direction, they will be producing a longitudinal wave. In both cases, energy is transferred from the left to the right. But the manner through which they do so differs, which is why we classify them into either transverse or longitudinal wave. In the very beginning of this video, we discussed that there are two types of waves, mechanical and electromagnetic. Electromagnetic waves are non-mechanical, which means that they do not require medium to propagate in. Electromagnetic waves are strictly transverse waves, so they are never longitudinal. All types of electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature. Electromagnetic waves consist of oscillation of electric and magnetic fields. The two fields will oscillate perpendicularly to one another. So you can see here the electric field represented by the, the symbol E is oscillating up and down, up and down in the vertical direction. While the magnetic field represented by the letter B is oscillating in the direction that's perpendicular to the electric field. The oscillation of both fields is perpendicular to the direction of the wave's propagation, which is to the right. And that's why it's classified as a transverse wave. There are many examples of electromagnetic waves. Most commonly, visible light, which is what allows us to see the objects around us, radio waves, and x-rays. These all consist of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. And all of these waves, although they can travel through a medium, they do not require one to propagate in. This is the reason why sunlight, which is a type of electromagnetic wave, can propagate through space in a vacuum from the sun to the surface of Earth. Finally, let's just compare the difference between mechanical and electromagnetic waves. The best comparison here can be made between transverse mechanical wave and electromagnetic waves. In mechanical waves, there's an oscillation of particles within that medium which allows for the propagation of the wave. In electromagnetic waves, the oscillation is not of the particles but of electric and magnetic fields. Like transverse mechanical waves, the direction of oscillation of these fields is perpendicular to the direction of the wave's propagation, which is why they're both classified as transverse waves. In contrast to mechanical waves, electromagnetic waves, they do not require medium to propagate in, which is why they are able to travel within a vacuum in space. As a way to test your understanding from this video in the introduction to waves, let's compare light and sound waves. We can approach this comparison by using a table layout. Let's start with similarities. While both of these are classified as waves, which means that they transfer energy from one location to another. For differences, light is classified as an electromagnetic wave, which means that it does not require medium to travel in. And electromagnetic waves are always transverse in nature. In contrast, sound waves are mechanical waves, which means that they do require medium to travel in. In particular, sound waves are classified as longitudinal waves because the direction of the particle oscillation is parallel to the direction of its propagation. This concludes the video in Introduction to Waves.